Hi, uh, so this video is going to be about the Lua programming language and uh, uh, specifically I wanted to show you how you can compile uh, an extended version of uh, the Lua interpreter which uh, comes with some additional features that uh, the standard Lua interpreter doesn't have. Uh, so this is a project called uh, Lua X uh, which I came across on GitHub and um, over here in the about section, we can uh, read this to get an idea of what it what it is. It says it, it, it's a Lua interpreter and REPL based on Lua 5.4, augmented with some useful packages, and that it's also a compiler that produces standalone executables from Lua scripts. Uh, so uh, let's take a look. Uh, let's scroll down over here to this. And oh yeah, like Lua X uh, stands for Lua Extended. Um, so if we scroll down to the to the build um, or like uh, built-in modules, uh, there we go. So we can see the list of all of the additional modules that it provides. Uh, so some things that caught my eye immediately were file system management and shell command execution. So that is something that I uh, ran into myself uh, uh, when programming in Lua. Uh, I found that like there. Uh, there's very few ways in which Lua can interact with the file system and run shell commands. So it's nice that they provide some additional uh, functionality related to that. I'm looking forward to f uh, find out what uh, what that has to offer. Uh, this is, by the way, something that I haven't tried yet myself in my own programming. So, But that's just something that I came across uh, online and uh, today I figured out how to compile it. So I'm making this video to show you how to compile it, but I'm just like gonna say a few words about what uh, I found interesting about it. So these two things. Um, then uh, some other things, JSON module built in, which is nice. Also arc parse, which is a, um, it's a parser for um, command line arguments. So like optional arguments, non-optional arguments kind of like get opt and uh, arc parse in Python as well so that you can have a script that has options and uh, that it, uh, then this library can parse those options and um, yeah you can have script that uh, that um, has a lot of uh, functionality built into it uh, so nice to have out of the box um, let's see like I'm sure that all these things are are useful. I haven't uh, like these are just some some of the ones that just immediately caught my eye, and uh, um, I thought that well it was like uh, nice that they provided all this, and uh, so I thought it was an interesting project. There's also this um, Lua X uh, interactive usage improved Lua REPL, which. Um, So let's take a look. Um, yeah, this is kind of how they, the the REPL looks. They have this logo here and uh, otherwise pretty much looks like standard Lua, although I'm pretty sure that it, since it's like improved Lua REPL, it has some additional features. I haven't quite got from the description what they exactly are, but uh, at the very least we can see that like additional modules here uh, that Lua X preloads uh, all of these when you just started, so you you will get like file system and shell command execution and like all these other uh, things like math and uh, you know like all all the other uh, modules preloaded. And uh, I don't see like arc parse here, but I'm pretty sure you could just uh, load it if you need it, and it would be just like built into Lua X itself. Um, that's how I imagine it works. So it's kind of nice to have all of that out, out of the box without having to like download additional libraries and um, and yeah, so sounds pretty useful. Uh, let's see if there is anything else that I, I wanted to mention here. Um, one thing, uh, let me see if I can find it, but basically when you compile Lua X, it's just like one standalone here. It says... Uh, Lua X is a single aut autonomous executable. It does not need to be installed and can be copied anywhere you want. So I imagine um, this, um, so it's, it, by the way, is the case also with the standard Lua, you can just compile it 
and you have just this binary called Lua and you can just embed it into whatever your project uh, is and it will be, uh, just be there. So you, you can do the same with Lua X and uh, like um, I hope that if, if I'm right about how this works it would be nice to just like have this Lua X standalone executable that I can just throw into my project and it will have all the all their uh, nice uh, out-of-the-box modules built into that and so I can write Lua using these modules and uh, it will be easy to for example just include it into github repo and uh, people can just like uh, clone the repo and uh, Lua X will can just sit there ready to go I uh, don't need to like ask them to just like oh like go to this place and compile it and like all that complicated stuff it'll be just uh, there a standalone executable and um, and yeah there you go you can just uh, very simply uh, in a very simple way like extend the functionality um, of Lua very easily without um, having a lot of library dependencies so I think uh, this will do for the introduction for the to this project so I'm really looking forward to finding out um, what it has to offer in practical terms but now let's um, Let's grab this URL basically and go over here to this other workspace and let's um, clone that repo. So I already tried uh, compiling it in a VM, which I also um, suggest to anyone, like really not just about the Wax, but when you are just want to try out some piece of software, just try it in a VM first because. Um, especially if you have to compile something, run some scripts that um, this project provides, there's always a risk that it can create some mess, like create some files on your system that you don't want. It's just, uh, yeah, much easier to try it out in the VM, work out all of the bugs there, and um, and then install it on your, uh, on your main system. So let's change uh, directories to Lua X. So here's the contents of the repo. So we're, we're going to be using this bootstrap.sh script, but with some modifications. So um, I'm going to show you how you can change the directory where it installs stuff, which I found pretty, I find pretty important because, uh, yeah, I like to, like to keep things organized on my system. And if I just like allow, you know, like whatever, like the, uh, you know, the creator of this project decided the 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 way that they organize their stuff doesn't necessarily mean that I organize it in the same way and it's just like everyone has different preferences so it's good to always like know how to uh, customize things to your liking so that uh, you store files in, in an organized way on your system so I'm going to show you how to do that um, so let's open let me see um, yeah, let's open this bootstrap.sh script to modify it. We'll also modify this build build.lua script um, because there is like this prefix where we're going to be installing uh, things and it, you need to modify it in both. If you just modify it in bootstrap but not in build, it will just uh, install things twice in both locations, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I something that I ran into but I'll show you how to um, uh, avoid uh, prevent that from happening so before we modify the prefix uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, this thing so basically it installs uh, one package I already have it installed um, so you can just run this script uh, and it will get the package installed or you can just open another uh, terminal window and you can just like uh, type uh, sudo apt install ninja build for example if you're on Debian and just run this command manually but you can also do it uh, through a script uh, I didn't have to do it um, uh, by using a script myself but um, yeah I'm pretty sure that that would work just fine um, so that's this uh, this ninja build package and uh, okay so now let's modify the prefix so here's the first place where um, 
you need to modify it. So by default, it installed it into dot .log local slash slash opt. I don't use dot .log local slash opt. I just use uh, uh, home uh, slash opt. So I'm gonna change it to that and I'll do the same over here. Uh, let me search for dot .local and yeah, change the same thing here so that it installs it into opt instead of dot local opt. Uh, let me see, am I forgetting anything? No, I think we're good. So uh, now we're gonna run this bootstrap sh and it's gonna install this uh, zig dependency and it will also uh, compile something, I'm not exactly sure what, but uh, once we're done with uh, this bootstrap sh we're uh, gonna oh yeah i guess it will compile lua x but then we'll also need to uh, run an additional command uh, which we can see here's by the way like some instructions on how to compile it in the readme file um, we also want to install lua x to a specific a specific prefix and so we'll have to run not just ninja install but prefix equals uh, then our prefix and then ninja install uh, so that's gonna be the whole process so let's uh, let's do that um, yeah so here's the diff for what I modified and let's just now run uh, bootstrap.sh so it will download uh, this uh, zig dependency and we'll extract it to uh, to opt. Uh, yeah. And so it's it's already compiling. It runs pretty quick. Uh, if you ever tried compiling standard low, it's kind of about the same. Um, amount of time it takes very quick standard Lua by the way doesn't seem like like I remember I compiled it once and uh, I didn't have to install any dependencies at, at all uh, so it was uh, very uh, straightforward that was just like pretty awesome um, that you can just compile it from, from source really quickly and you get like a, st a single file and you can just put it anywhere um let's see so it looks like everything went fine let's take a look at what we have so we will look in opt zig uh there's like uh, another subdirectory with the version number and uh, there's that you can also create a sim link to this uh, zig if you want it on your path uh, like i don't know i'm probably not going to use it for anything else so i might just leave it alone um so yeah, uh, so now Lua, I guess it has compiled. Now we need to install it. So ninja install, and then we need to set this environment variable prefix equals. So let's see, I'm going to install it to not, uh, so by default, if you don't specify the prefix, it's gonna be uh, dot .local, yeah, dot .local, the pref default prefix is home.local. They show here that a prefix uh, uh, root usr, for example, you can put it there and then it's gonna go to root usr bin and root usr lib. Um, so I'm gonna, I have a, like, I, I don't use dot .local for just like a uh, thing that I compile myself. Um, I have another directory called just local without the dot and that's what I'm going to use for the prefix. So I'm going to set it to home um, local. And uh, yeah, and so ninja install. So there we go, it installed it, it showed what it did. Everything makes sense. 
Okay, so it placed. Uh, there's actually a list here of all the. It says Lua X artifacts. Ninja install installs. And then the list of files. I really like this. It's like a small list, and you know exactly what what it installs. So I'm not really like really uh, like you know. Uh, uncertain about like what it just did it's just like yeah here are the files and uh, so when you run ninja install it also shows it to you what it did um, so so yeah basically now I have uh, Lua X in my local bin and uh, I already have local bin on my path so I can just like uh, I can just run Lua X and here I go I have Lua X uh, so yeah, uh, we've successfully compiled it. I think this is gonna be uh, pretty much it for this video. I, uh, since I haven't tried using it uh, yet, um, yeah, I think it makes sense to wrap it up here. But I'm really looking forward to seeing what it, uh, uh, to seeing what um, opportunities it, it it provides in terms of like all these additional modules. Um, looks like a very interesting project so yeah that's it i hope you like this video and that it helps you out uh, in compiling little x in your system and yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one